That's none of your business. This is not your land. You don't just get to drive on it and do whatever you want. It was a really, <laughs> a really weird thing. Stay the heck off my land. I think this has probably been one of the most effective forms and not really of a deterrent but more of a, a, a monitoring and knowing what's going on because you can take that information you can give it to the police you can head out to your property you can notify your neighbor and we're going to make sure that the people that we don't want out here aren't out here no matter what we did they still just cleared everything out and just kept trespassing on the land Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to talk about all the things I'm doing to secure my property. You know, there's things that are working. There's some that aren't, you know, they're just not effective even though maybe you would think they would be. Trespassing is a big problem. It's very annoying. I just, it rubs me the wrong way. So I wanna tell you everything I'm doing to prevent trespassing today. I'm curious to know what you guys find to be effective. So please take the time and leave a comment down below. So if you enjoyed today's video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button to see more tractor and property videos. And if you want something for your machine, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Okay, I wanna hit you with what I think is probably the most ineffective deterrent that I've had experience with so far. We're standing about, 100 feet onto my property the the driveway just goes right here loops around behind the camera and over to the road there's five no trespassing signs that you would have to pass <laughs> before you get to this point point. and i've had i think 15 about 15 different trespassers get to this point get all the way past all those signs get to this point where they're on camera and identified as being on camera and i've spent hundreds of dollars on signs not just for right here along the drive but along the road and for other areas in the property on the other road over there too you know signs that say we'll prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law you know i mean i've got a whole plethora of signs that say there's there's no this that and the other thing out there and people just don't care right they have no concern about what these signs say they have no concern about being prosecuted right there's there's very little you can really do, and it's very hard to prosecute a trespasser unless you have ample evidence that's just overwhelming. And this has been a little bit of everything. You know, we've had a lot of folks in this um, community here that have golf carts for whatever reason. They think it's just their own piece of personal ground. They can come drive their golf cart on and drive around whatever they want, whether it's adults or kids or a mixture of both. Uh, people walking their dogs, all sorts of vehicles that have driven down here. It is amazing how often people come out here. And I was out here just the other day, and a guy pulled in in his truck, and he saw me. <laughs> and he went to turn around and I flagged him down. You know, I went and talked to him. He's like, oh, I'm just curious to see if a development's going on back here or what's going on. I'm like, it's none of your business. This is not your land. You don't just get to drive on it and do whatever you want. I'm a pretty agreeable guy, but I just feel like I've dealt with trespassers my whole life on property that I've leased, on my grandparents' property, on this property, and it's the same kind of people everywhere you go. They have no respect. So while I'm still gonna keep no trespassing signs posted all over the property and probably continue to put more and more of them up, they're really not gonna do much by themselves. All right, so until we actually build out here, I wanted to have a gate in place and I kind of built these, these dirt berms. I have, I have more dirt to add to kind of build to each side, but this gate here is really just the only access point for the entire property, which I really like. And you know, I have everything cemented down into the ground. Uh, I had this gate built. I went out and got one of the heaviest duty it's actually a square link um, chain that I that I found along with a lock, really heavy duty lock for that. That's uh, obviously anything can be can be cut through or, or, or broken through, but it's going to take some time. And uh, if the folks are messing around with this, well, they're going to have been on camera for quite some time with me knowing about it. And so I didn't want to mess around. I mean, I've got, I think, a few hundred bucks into this chain and this lock. Um, quite a bit of money into the gate as well. But the point is that you're starting to layer different components into your security for your property. And each step is typically gonna slow the process down a little bit for somebody who would otherwise trespass or wanna cause harm or do something stupid on your property. And something like this is going to give you time to call the police or get out here yourself or call a neighbor that's nearby, something else to get around here and help deter those people from doing what they do. So one of the best investments that I've made has actually been in cell cameras, cellular cameras that uh, you can run off of Verizon or AT&T or maybe Sprint as well. There's a couple other services, but there's a few companies that make these cameras. And I bought a couple of them actually a year or two ago for another hunting lease that I had and uh, ended up buying some more of them. And I have a whole bunch of them out here now at, uh, at this property as well, just to not only one, just to see what's going on with deer movement and everything else on the property, but two for security. So uh, I know 
it just sends you a picture or two or three pictures or video, whatever you want, uh, right after things happen, right after events take place. So within seconds, really. And so I've been running these Spartan cameras. I got these on Amazon actually, and they come just like what you see. You can get security boxes and solar chargers and they have different levels and, and everything. And actually I'm, I'm getting pictures, uh, notifications on my, on my phone and on my, uh, on my watch right now. It's sending pictures of us doing this, but it's, it's pretty much real time. And so we've got this one set up right now for three photo bursts. You can set it for for certain intervals if you you know if you say you have a bunch of deer hanging out here you don't want to take pictures every five seconds you want to wait 15 seconds or 30 seconds or a minute or whatever the lapse is in between segments but this has been really reliable um, actually I just replaced the batteries just a couple of days ago for the first time in well since we moved out here so at the at the end of June so it's been four months four and a half months something like that now this model does take 12 batteries I had put the the regular Duracells in there and I replaced them with uh, lithiums this time which are more expensive but um, depending on how many pictures or how much activity you have the the quantity you know if you're doing videos or three picture burst versus just a single shot you know you're going to go through batteries more often as well as how much activity you may have on a camera but if you don't live near your property or on your property even if you do if you have a big piece of property it's just nice to have that instant notification come to your phone so you know if anything's going on um, cool you know very cool from a, a deer standpoint or turkey or whatever wildlife you have on your property but from a security standpoint having that ability to know what's going on right away even if you're a ways away from your property is pretty priceless. So anyway, I think this has probably been one of the most effective forms and not really of a deterrent, but more of a, a monitoring and knowing what's going on because you can take that information, you can give it to the police, you can head out to your property, you can notify your neighbor, you can take action based on getting that information so it can put you in a more advantageous spot to have more control long-term over your property. So I'll put a link below to where you can buy those on Amazon if you want to. You can go right to Spartan's website and sign up for their subscription service. If you get more than one camera, you can kind of bundle them onto the same data plan so it becomes more cost effective. But anyway, there's a lot of options, a lot of ways you can configure it, but so far I'm really impressed. Okay, so we're very fortunate to have a police station that's just a mile or a mile and a half away. I've already needed them a couple times since we've moved out here and where we're standing about a week ago, there was a car up on blocks. <laughs> These are the blocks right here that um, were brought out by whoever decided to leave a car on blocks here. And I think it was a Mercury Milan, if I recall correctly. I have a few pictures of it that I took, but it was a really, <laughs> a really weird thing to, to pull out here off of the road. You know, we're not on a, on a heavily traveled road, but just to pull over here and, and see a car parked, and I thought there was just a car parked here, and then I get closer and I realize the whole thing's up on blocks, the, the, the wheels and the tires are gone. You know, there's no other anything around, there's no people, there's no signs of, um, blood or any any anything goofy going on but I called the cops they came out just shortly a few minutes later and um, there was no vehicles that were reported stolen there were no uh, incidents of like a hit and run the front bumper of this vehicle was was almost completely ripped off um, no missing person cases no anything like that so because of that and it being on private property it was going to be my responsibility to call a tow company and have it removed and the tow company I guess would um, either back charge the owner of whoever it was uh, licensed to or they would somehow take ownership of it and sell it off. I don't I don't know exactly, but there was going to be no cost out of out of pocket for me. However, just a short time later, before I even had a chance to get everything set up with a towing company, the police called back, said that there was a stolen vehicle reported. I think it was a couple hours away that just somehow randomly made its way over here. I can't imagine those wheels and tires were anything special, but what do I know? But this was the second time that we had to call the cops out here. Let's go take a look at the first. So right after we moved out here, uh, we were kind of going through the fields and everything and found a bunch of this stuff piled up in a couple different areas. So we called the cops out here because there were just bags of fertilizer, uh, you know, nitrogen and, and, and sulfur and um, water jugs out here. Who knows if they were filled with water or not. Um, Rubbermaid bins, a little Caesars pizza box, you know, there's, there's, something going on that was really strange out here and and somebody took a lot of effort to carry these big heavy bags of fertilizer out here as well so it seemed like there was some kind of a grow going on uh, we never really found any any actual growing evidence but um, it was a bit unusual to say the least but again these are two opportunities where it's it's helped um, us with the local police station make them aware of some activity that's going on out here that's you know a little bit suspicious and so now with the second time calling them out in, in four months it's heightened the awareness for them to kind of patrol or monitor the area it's it's given us some 
I don't know, inside information, I guess, just to, things to be aware of in our community in general too. So it's just raised the level of awareness. And I don't think it's a bad idea either for um, more police officers and patrols to be seen around the area. It's gonna help heighten the awareness and the sense of security for the community. And I don't wanna paint this as a bad area. You know, this is really a beautiful uh, part of Southwest Michigan. You know, we have Gold Lake just to the north, uh, some beautiful golf courses, Sherman Lake uh, just to the south. It's well, you know, it's a, it's a very nice area. This is just a big chunk of vacant land that I think has been vacant for a long time. And so that's probably plays into it as well is, is just kind of, it's, it's a change into the tides or a change into the guard, you know, and, and we're not going to let that kind of stuff just go unnoticed. You know, there's going to be human activity out here. We're going to be out here a lot and we're going to make sure that the people that we don't want out here aren't out here. So something that was very, very high on my priority list when we were looking for property was going to be limited access. And I mean that in a couple of different ways. This property in particular is pretty unique in its layout where we have a pond along the majority of an entire border, about 4,000 foot. Um, you do have roads on the east and the west side and then the majority of your neighbors are gonna be along the southern border. But um, there's a lot of very steep elevation changes from the road up on the east and the west end, you know, with that pond along the northern border, and then some very heavy, dense um, growth with trees and thickets and brambles and briars and everything else. It's very challenging to get onto this property, and I love that. But that was something that I knew about because I've had a lot of issues with trespassers on other properties. You know, my grandparents' property growing up, uh, one of their neighbors that came up from Detroit just had a vacant piece of land and had a little barn i guess they put on there they come up for hunting season a couple other times throughout the year they had beaten down a four-wheeler path coming onto my grandpa's land so bad that it was just right down to the bare dirt and we would throw logs and everything else across that just to try to, to keep them from doing it you know we would i've talked to him about that in the past you know years ago and just nothing seemed to work no matter what we did they still just cleared everything out and just kept trespassing on the land and that's just one of of many issues i'm sure you guys have a lot of horror stories as well but the point being is that was something unique that added value to me as to how the property was laid out and minimizing the points where somebody else can come onto it so we passed on many 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 properties over the years and one of the huge culprits in so many properties that we looked at bordered neighborhoods right and i live in a neighborhood now i get it but when you have 30 40 50 houses lining your property along one side that's 30, 40, 50 different households that you need to manage, right? Some that are gonna respect your property, some that aren't. I walked a property about a year ago this time last year and a beautiful piece on, on a small lake. It was just a gorgeous piece of land. And as we were walking across it, I intentionally wanted to walk on the neighborhood side to see if there was trash or what was going on, just what the kind of interaction was along that entire border. And there were two households that had tree stands in the, in the neighbor's backyard overlooking not their property and there was even a gut pile on one of them so it's just something that i don't want to deal with you know it's bad enough here i think i have maybe i don't know six neighbors or something along the south border and that's enough for me you know that's enough for me to want to manage but that is something you need to think about before you buy a property and i'm telling you you do not want to deal with that down the road another really effective one and it depends on your property size i suppose but that could be fencing so fencing is going to restrict folks from driving their they're four wheelers, you know, it's going to restrict folks from wanting to walk their dogs or at least make that a lot more challenging, you know, from taking vehicles on, uh, from riding horses. There's a lot of things that fencing is going to do or at least natural obstructions. So I've spent a lot of time out here already opening up a lot of different areas, but I've been very conscious about anytime I'm near a border and trying to keep that thick and nasty. There are actually existing fences in place here in a lot of different locations and I want all around the edges to get almost impenetrable. So again, you're talking about layers, right? You want to have every possible thing to be a deterrent so that if somebody maybe is thinking about coming onto your land just to walk their dog or do nothing really that's malicious, but just to enjoy the, the space that's out there, they're seeing the sign, they're seeing the gate, they're seeing all these different signs over time, especially if they're local to the area and they're realizing, stay the heck off my land. So this last thing, and I probably can't stress this enough is to try to make good friends with your neighbors, you know, especially if you're not living on your property or if you have a big piece of property and you don't have easy access to the far corners of it, it is really nice to have somebody you can count on to keep you informed, you know, to kind of look out and see what's going on out there and, and give you a call or send you a text message or go ask somebody what the heck they're doing if you're not around, right? So about a week after we moved in, we got to know this neighbor right back here who is uh, putting up a cabin as well on his property. And 
he needed some access through our property uh, if he would oblige to get some heavy equipment back here because he had a really steep driveway and it was just gonna be a lot more convenient uh, to have the construction guys come this way. So we ended up developing a relationship there pretty quickly uh, from the beginning of buying this property and that's proven very helpful, you know. So he sent some messages, given a couple phone calls just to ask, you know, hey, is is this supposed to be going on out at your property or is everything okay? Should we be checking out and, and, and going up and talking to them or what should we do? So it's really reassuring and that's probably one of the biggest assets you can do is try to get to know the neighbors, exchange phone numbers, you know, just get on friendly terms with the people that are around the property you have. It is much easier and more satisfying to be friendly than it is to be enemies. Okay, well that's gonna wrap it up. You know, that's what we're doing out here so far and uh, I'm always looking to add additional layers to the defense system, so to speak. So if you have something that we should add to our arsenal to our tool belt so to speak out here to protect the property i'd love to know what you're using that works so if you did enjoy today's video i'd love to get a thumbs up from you hit that subscribe button down below to see more tractor and property videos and if you want something for your tractor make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon